Hey everybody, happy Saturday. This is the Blade Barista. Uh, today we're gonna talk about grinding. I'm just gonna preface all of this by saying this is an informational video today, so if you're not into that, that's just not your bag. Uh, just keep scrolling, that's fine. Uh, for the rest of you, today we're gonna talk about grinding. Uh, this is gonna be everything that's led to here, I guess, today. Uh, we will be giving some information away, uh, just some general things that we've observed as we have continued to develop our process to where it is right now. Um, as many of you know, we started off, we didn't own or run any of this. Uh, I was a designer, I was just chasing an idea of a better knife. Had no idea where that was gonna go uh, until now-ish. But, uh, so we were utilizing several subcontractors when I kind of started ramping up initially uh, a couple of years ago and ran into some struggles with grinding and different things. I know some of you homemakers, uh, smaller companies, I've been to the knife store. Uh, some of you don't know you have grinding problems, but you do. Uh, this is very pervasive and I know it's a, a, everybody handles it differently. So uh, we're just gonna throw some information out there. Uh, looking at the peen finish we're not doing anymore, that was due to some grinding struggles. Uh, we didn't have any equipment to do finishing and things ourselves, so we were 100% reliant on a subcontractor that is a high volume subcontractor. They do knives and different things, so there's kind of one set standard, and if you want to deviate outside of that, there's going to be some handwork or different things that you're going to have to do, uh, especially in our case where we're trying for this really, really high standard in every area of our designs. Um, so obviously that didn't work out. And when we moved here to initially being with Millet, uh, they had a small table surface grinder. And early on we saw the struggles of that and being, they had a particular background, a different shop. Uh, that is the style grinder that they were comfortable with. So we made investments to move into a larger style grinder that's not here anymore. So we know how that worked out. Uh, we still, I could see early on after we got this machine that we still weren't going to have the type of throughput or the grinding quality that I was looking for. So when that started not really net the results still that we were looking for, uh, we invested in this machine. This is a Blanchard style grinder. Uh, it grinds very differently than the table style grinders and we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, looking at that, I think that I don't know that for a lot of these people, if, if you're looking for a surface grinder, maybe look at a grinder like this, especially if you're going to do blades, uh, where we're really looking for a high degree of accuracy in the thickness, parallelism, straightness. Uh, I do believe this is overlooked a lot of times as, as an option that can do everything. Um, so I guess talking about some of that, the table grinders, uh, I think if you look through our social media, we did a lot of R&D to get that, that push as far as we could. And it still just wasn't providing the results that we were looking for. I'd still, you know, hear Thomas or somebody back here, the machine would start howling because there's a lot of grinding pressure. And if I use this fancy dressing puck here, we can, it's five o'clock somewhere, um, kind of talk about the differences between the grinding styles. So when we're using a table surface grinder, uh, this part is traversing the table with a spinning wheel. So basically you're, you're melon balling material out of the surface as it works its way under this stone. With a Blanchard style grinder, the wheel is oriented parallel to the working surface and the part is being fed under a spinning wheel. So we're shearing it off without digging down into the surface of the material. Uh, I think that that is, especially after some of the things we've seen recently, that this is a, su a superior way of grinding uh, compared to a table style grinder. Uh, I think we're getting flatter parts. We're able to get a lot closer to on size right off the get go. And it's just, you're putting less stress into the blades. Uh, so we're gonna step in here and talk about that. So I just happen to have a bunch of working samples here to prove my point about the differences in grinding styles. Uh, these were ground by the old millet team. Uh, the grinding went poorly and the, the parts were bowing and jumping off the table. So we had pulled those off the table, set them aside. Uh, more recently, what I had done was 
put them on the Blanchard, sucked them flat to the magnet and cleaned up the surface. So we have a nice uniform side to side surface here. And it was our expectation that we would be able to send these out and have them annealed and take that stress, the bowing out of them and then uh, re-harden them. Uh, unfortunately, there was so much stress put in this that they're bowed exactly the same way as they were previously, which these are obviously unusable. Uh, so what was happening here is the wheel was loading up and kind of smashing the surface. And it definitely changed the grain structure inside and changed the memory of the sheet. So they're, they're extremely warped. Uh, they're, they're cupped in this direction and this direction. So it's not really anything we can do with these parts. So uh, yeah, that's fun. So this was supposed to be a surprise batch for all you guys. Uh, it ended up being a surprise for us, but that's fine. We're just gonna work through that. It was something where we learned and uh, that was an interesting lesson. Um, looking at stress real quick, this is an aside. These crew forge parts came back and even sometimes when you do everything right on your end, it still turns out wrong. So we're matching these tips up here and the pommels and you can see how much these parts, I'm not sure if it's a, if it was a materials issue or a rolling issue, whatever happened, there was some memory in these sheets and the parts actually changed sizes. Some of these are in more of an S shape. Some of the tips pulled up or dropped. Uh, you can see these two, they just changed pretty dramatically. Nothing lines up. So um, some of these just aren't gonna work out. But those are just things that happen, part of doing business. So anyway, uh, back to the Blanchard style grinder. So uh, when we're looking at the table grinder here, we knew just based on some of these experiences and even in some of our more traditionally stable materials like 3V, we're still getting some bowing and things, which we can you know, use a carbide peener here and hammer that out, flatten everything out, but they should be more stable. So what we started doing here is we got the Blanchard grinder, which we're just gonna come over here real quick was we got this, it landed, uh, we spoke with the abrasions rep, they thought everything was, you know, they've dealt with these steels, these customers, uh, they had it figured out. Uh, the first wheel showed up, they didn't grind. Uh, it was too much force, uh, too much pressure needed to grind. Uh, we couldn't really grind annealed, we couldn't grind hard. Uh, so we talked about that and got the next formulation. Fast forward here a few months and this is iteration number seven. And we've got two different circumstances now where we're able to grind annealed and we've got a wheel coming that's going to grind uh, hard materials also very effectively. So this is where things are moving. Uh, I'm not sure where I was going with that, but we're looking at this now. Uh, I will talk about some of the struggles and how you can ameliorate some of those issues, but looking at where we are right now, we're changing our production to where we're just a few thou over here. I don't know if you can zoom in and see uh, I like about two thou aside just for cleanup, handling, if something gets dinged. Um, if you really come down there, you can see that these parts are dead flat. So we have a really free grinding wheel. And other than some shadows there, because there is some small tolerance in the water jet cutting, um, there's no light or air gaps in those parts now. So what we're doing here is grinding just a few thou over annealed uh, that improves our tool life because we get more drops out of a tool and it's just a nicer starting place to machine things and you're going to start seeing some accent machining and different things that weren't really able to be done with full thickness blanks that we're going to start getting into just to really spice these up and make them really really nice um, so we can see here uh, i'm not over here flattening things with an arbor press and you know, traditionally when I was looking at what was going on here, they would grind one side, the parts would bow, they'd flatten them out and grind the other side, they would bow, and then you flatten them out again. Uh, we don't have to do that anymore because we're grinding with a very low amount of pressure and everything just stays flat. So we bring this down, um, I grade these out in about one thou increments over here, and then uh, we try as close as possible down to about a thou, thou and a half, uh, grind about the same amount off of each side. So we're getting through all that scale and getting down to good material 
and now we're into this really nice homogeneous material uh, under the roller scale. So yeah, uh, that's what's going on here. And I expect these to come back very flat from heat treat. And we'll talk about that again. We've got a new really, really fine wheel just for taking that last few thou off and getting that really, really beautiful finish. So some things we've learned here are uh, the steel surface, you know, they do a really good job, but it's not always perfect. So sometimes the steel scale here is a little bit rougher on one side or the other. Uh, some companies just leave all this and then grind down. Uh, that's not really my preference. I don't think it's a professional finish, but um, always make sure you get stock that's thick enough to get down to that good steel. Uh, you can hope and cross your fingers that you can do a minimal amount of cleanup, but stuff like this just randomly happens. Uh, the rollers get dirty or they get a little, you know, warped after rolling however many pounds of this hot rolled alloy and they need redressed. So uh, just make sure you're getting an appropriate stock thickness. And if you want to save yourself some headache, a lot of times these steels, this will bow in this direction uh, just with this rougher scale. Um, still trying to figure that out, but it does tend to bias in that direction. So uh, if you just want a straighter, flatter part from heat treat, get all this stuff off and get down to some good material. So in summary here, if you have a small garage shop and you just got a, you know, a table style grinder and you're running into warping issues or loading issues, uh, try more friable wheel. Try something with a coarser grit than you think might work. Uh, don't be afraid to call up the abrasive company and just talk through some of your issues to get a better result because this, this isn't typical. This shouldn't be typical at least. And uh, it's certainly not acceptable. I know that makes uh, getting parts out the door a lot harder and there are better ways. Uh, if you can afford a Blanchard style grinder, do it. Um, make sure you're getting a good machine. There's a lot of people out there that are just painting these things and selling them as something rebuilt and they're not. Um, but obviously we are able to grind to a very, very high standard. I don't know if you come in here a second, Ellie. Uh, this is just rough grinding, but we're able to use a fine enough wheel that you can still see a reflection of my finger in there. If I can get it to focus. There we go. So this is the rough grinding and we have an even finer wheel that is optimized to take that last few thou after heat treat, which that's gonna be an immaculate surface. So uh, yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. I'm gonna get back to work, but I uh, hope everyone's having a good weekend and we'll talk to you again soon.